Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be talking about the worst eyeshadow palettes of 2021 and let me tell you, there were some disappointing ones. I did post yesterday my worst makeup of 2021 and I was really sad in that video because my makeup didn't look good because I wore a full face of the worst makeup. So today on my face, I have a makeup that I do like. So if you like what you see, <laughs> check out the description box. I had to compensate for yesterday minus the eyeshadow palette. I'm wearing one of the eyeshadow palettes in this video. But the thing with some of these eyeshadow palettes is that, you know, some of them are not necessarily bad. Some of them I might be able to make work I can get pretty looks out of but for whatever reason they disappointed me I expected better or they are just bad so this is in no particular order the other than alphabetical order of the brand because there's no point in ranking them like they're all bad <laughs> I mean if you like these I'm very happy that it worked out for you but for me my expectations and my style of makeup they just didn't work out with me so let's get into it So the first palette that I have is from Chanel. Now Chanel was a brand that I really started trying this year. It was one of my goals to try more Chanel. I didn't pick up everything, but if I was interested in a collection, I did try it out. So this came in a collection of two eyeshadow palettes, and this is actually my first ever dive into Chanel eyeshadow palettes. And um, <laughs> as you can see, it made quite the impression for being in this video. But this is the Tenderly Healthy Glow Eyeshadow Palette. And there was another shade that had more green tones, but this was extremely underwhelming to me given the price. Nothing about these eyeshadows are original, but I find this shade to be quite chunky. It doesn't necessarily adhere to the lid. It's just a powder. When you put it on, it'll wipe right off. This shade gave me a whole bunch of nothing, honestly. The mattes, they were fine and you can get this to work, but for the price that you pay, these eyeshadows honestly kind of remind me of drugstore palettes. I much prefer the green one, but so far with my very little experience with Chanel, I didn't like the eyeshadow palettes in this collection. And this one in particular was worse to me and it was not even a nice color story. I do quite love this packaging though. I think it is absolutely stunning, but for my expectations, I was definitely let down by this eyeshadow palette. So it had to be in this video. Do you guys want to know low key, the most disappointing brand? Like I have five palettes from this brand. That is unacceptable given the price. A lot of the eyeshadow palettes, by the way, in today's video are more luxury or more expensive just because I expect more. <sighs> Dior and I'm so confused because Dior was also at the same time at one of my favorite brands of 2021 I really felt like they stepped it up, but they came out with some eyeshadow palettes that I was not a fan of So let's get into it. The first one that I have is the Tree Oblique Trios Now these were from the beginning not my favorites. These launched in early early 2021 So every time I've had the opportunity to talk about bad eyeshadow palettes this year I've talked about these these two both look the same on the eye. This matte color down here, it's an odd like gel formulation, but it's sticky and none of the color translates onto the eyelid. The shimmers in both are okay. The pinkish shades have a little bit of trouble showing up on the eyelid, but they're not as bad. But anyways, they are much more pretty than they apply. And like I said, for them coming out in the same collection, both pretty much look the same on the eyelids. When you can scrape up the shadow, you can certainly get a pretty soft look, but it it's just not good. It's not worth the price, but dang they are just so beautiful I saw that they were coming out with some new trio bleaks. I hope the formulation on them is improved mm, These were terrible though huge disappointments not anything like another Dior eyeshadow formula that I've ever tried before very bad Also, I don't know why but these two fingers on both hands are super cracking Just ignore that you guys know I never have good nails <laughs> anyways Okay, so the next one that I have is from the Cruise Look Collection. Now, this is a huge step up in quality compared to the Trio Bleaks. It's a little bit better here, but I just don't understand this color story. I was going to reach for a Dior palette today because I haven't reached for them in a while and I wanted to use one, but 
the fact that I just didn't want to use it, I wanted to play with a little bit more color, something more interesting, that says a lot about the Dior. I didn't want to use them. This, again, quality is better. This is more up to par with the very good formula from Dior, but the color story in here is so weird to me. There is no depth in this palette, but this shade right here is very nice. It's very deep, but it doesn't go with any of the other shades that I feel. I just haven't liked any look that I've come up with with this. It's just, it's so soft and weird. I just don't like this color story. If they had done something as simple as making this a matte brown or even a shimmery brown, I don't care. I think this palette would have felt more complete. I don't think I'd ever be in love with this palette, but when I use these outside shades, this is all I have left for a little bit of depth and this doesn't go or if I put this all over the lid, I don't have anything darker to pair with it. It's just an odd, odd quint. Not a fan of this one. The next Dior quint that I did not like. I was talking so good about Dior this year, but in all reality, oh my gosh, this was a wake up call, but this is the Mirage eyeshadow palette. So this came out, I believe in the summer collection and you can get a really pretty peachy coral look with this one. I actually quite like the quality, but what I do not like is all of these, I swear to you, are the same shade. All five of these eyeshadows, I would say you probably get two shades in here. They all end up translating on the eyelid the same. Because they are that baked gelée formula, which I really do love in luxury makeup, you just need to be aware that they're not going to be as vibrant or as pigmented. That's the nature of the shadow, but it gives you a really soft ethereal finish on the eye. That's why we like these kind of formulations. But given that formulation, I do not know why they put so many shades that were so close to each other. Very little variation and on the eye, every single look that you do, it's going to turn out with the exact same look. So that was a waste of money. Honestly though, I still kind of like it. You know, when I want a peachy coral look, I would <laughs> grab for this. But in terms of value, terrible. Like, why? <laughs> okay, on the last Dior quint that I have to drag, apparently, is the Early Bird quint. Now this one is... A little, I think some of you are going to disagree with me. By the way, I did see that this and the Nightbird palette from this collection did restock on Selfridges. I'll have it linked below if you're interested. Nightbird is much better than Early Bird. And I actually quite like this palette. But again, it's not good and it's not acceptable for Dior. You pay $65 for these quints and the top three shades are beautiful. This shade picks up nothing and quite honestly, this is a weird pairing of colors. I find it very difficult to create a look. They just don't go with each other. I think on my anniversary, I wore these three shades and they were stunning. I love my makeup look, but the eyeshadow quality isn't where it needs to be at altogether. Well, I did like the looks that I created. Dior has a much better formulation in their line and I just don't know what happened to this one, especially with this shade. You get absolutely nothing from it. And again, for $65, I'm not gonna let that slide, you know? <laughs> Anyways, if you are interested in Dior, the quince from the permanent line, you're gonna love that formulation is amongst the best on the luxury market, if you ask me. So I don't understand why when it comes to their limited edition collection, these quints are not good because all of these were limited edition palettes and they all are terrible, but anytime they add a new color to the permanent line, it's like the best of the best. So Dior leaves me very confused because I want to praise them. I want to praise their beautiful collections. I love their embossments. I love the ideas. But then their eyeshadow palettes are so extremely inconsistent. Dior is one of those brands where if I was a consumer and not like a makeup reviewer, I would 1000% wait for the reviews first before purchasing because you really truly never know. Okay, so the next eyeshadow palette that we have is from this holiday season. This is the Fenty Beauty Bomb Posse Mega Mix and Match eyeshadow palette. Ugh, this is just a very underwhelming palette. You know, it's not the most expensive price point here, but these are very basic shades that even a drugstore brand can really master. They're quite easy to formulate from what I've gathered from my experience but the mattes in here are fine it's the shimmers that are extremely lackluster and disappointing and I'm not saying you can't get a pretty look I spent a whole week actually forcing myself to play with this palette to really get the ins and outs of it and I liked the looks that I created but it was always underwhelming there was nothing wow about this and honestly there's nothing really good about this palette you can get so many better formulas 
at this price point. Like, this is one of the last eyeshadow palettes I would recommend to you in Sephora because knowing what you can get at this price point, it's just, it's not good, okay? The shimmers are so lackluster. And like I said, mattes are fun, very user-friendly, nothing to write home about, but not an issue. But the shimmers is what you want a little bit of va va voom with, and they are just wah, 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 not very good. Didn't like this palette at all. Was extremely disappointed because I was really excited about this palette. It was the first color story that I saw from Fenty in a very, very long time. That I was like, ooh, this is exciting. I know it's like a boring color story, but if it's done well, those are the kind of palettes that I reach for. This was not done well. Okay, the next palette that we have simply is because of the price versus the quality that you're going to get. And this is the Gucci eyeshadow palette. And here's the deal with this. I've said this before. I bought this more so for the packaging. I'm not gonna lie. You guys know I'm a little crazy like that. Don't recommend that for everybody. Uh, but I actually liked the color story. Everybody talked about how weird it was. But if you break it up into your mind in terms of quads, it really makes sense. You have a mauve cooler look. You have have a warm look and then you have more of a colorful smoky eye so the layout I thought was really really nice first of all it's so dumb how small <laughs> these pans are and how big this packaging is and the quality it's just not there generally speaking I have loved almost everything from the Gucci beauty line I think after they revamped the brand it's just gone uphill for them they've done a fabulous job but they really dropped the ball on this eyeshadow palette I find this palette difficult to use and I don't find a lot of palettes difficult to use not to like sound like that but I work with a lot of eyeshadow palettes and some of the shimmers will fall out they aren't creamy enough to stick to the lid the mattes in here are decent it's more Mostly the shimmers that give me trouble but I find it really difficult to create a look when you're using more than three or four shades multiple times I've tried to create not necessarily intricate but looks that required a larger number of shades and this palette really struggled with that the only time that I can use this palette and feel like okay this is quick and easy is when I do a very simple two to three eyeshadow look which for this price point I shouldn't have to do that every single shade should be great and every single shade should work together so so yeah, I feel like they need to go back to the drawing board with this formulation because if they continue to come out with more eyeshadow palettes with this formulation, I don't think it's going to go over well. It's just not worth it. Again, a lot of the formulas in here remind me of like drugstore formulas. And if you're new here, I work with drugstore shadows. They are fine, but there's a powderiness to them that doesn't stick to the lid. And that's what I feel that the Gucci has. And it's a lot more expensive than the drugstore, so you can't justify it. ColourPop quality is way better than this. All right, the next palette that we have is from Melt Cosmetics. This was another one of their inconsistent launches. I'm hoping that they're going up, though, because the last couple of palettes that I've tried, the Brunette and the Amour palette, have been awesome. So hopefully this was the last of it. But this is the Mary Jane palette, and it's such a shame because this color story quite honestly I don't regret picking this up because the color story is that beautiful I will literally fight with these shadows just to get these colors on my eyes but with the price point the formulation is a hot mess express oh my goodness so many of these shades are just flaky and chunky and get all over your face absolutely do not attempt an eye look with your face makeup on. Eyes need to be first for this. You really have to press those shimmers into the eyelid to really work them in to make sure that they're going to stay. If you don't do that, glitter's gonna be all over your face, if not when you apply it, but then when it's the end of the day. So yeah, Ugh, it's really, really bad, you guys. I haven't come across a formula so flaky like that, like ever. And it, to make the matters worse, there's so much reflex and glitters in these shades that it just makes the biggest mess. So I wish they would reformulate this because I really love the color story and there aren't palettes like this on the market. But uh, uh. Okay, the next palette might be surprising to you. This is the Natasha Denona Zendo palette. The quality on this is 
absolutely fine. If this is a color story that you're interested in, I'm not going to discourage you from picking it up. But uh, it was like a kind of moment from Natasha Denona for me. So the main reason I dislike this is because of the color story. I find it really difficult to work with. I understand the whole concept behind it. Earth, fire, water, air, whatever. I get that but it makes it very easy for looks to get muddy. I have a really hard time putting together looks with this other than we're either going to get a warm neutral look or we're going to play with these blues over here because the two sides do not go well together. I get muddiness every single time so I hate the color story of this but also this is not like the Natasha Denona formula that I love. These shimmers are definitely more toned down which some of you might like that. I'm not saying that the shimmers are bad quality like some of the others that I've talked about today. They're fine, they stick to the lid, great textures, all of that. But when I go to Natasha Denona, she has a phenomenal metallic and shimmer formula. Even if it's not metallic, her shimmer formula always blows me away. These are just boring shimmers to me. So if you like the color story and you do prefer a more subdued shimmer look, you actually might really like this. But for me, this is not what I'm looking for from Natasha Denona. So I was very disappointed by this palette this year. I really have struggled with it. Okay, let's move on to Tom Ford. I thought Tom Ford would be that super luxe expensive brand that I ragged on, but it ended up being Dior. But I do have two Tom Ford quads that I tried this year that I was less than impressed with. So we'll start off with the earlier launch. This is Rose Prisme. They did come out with another one at the time that they launched this, but this one is just an underwhelming palette to me. And I think the quality is fine. If you like the Tom Ford wet dry formula, you will like this if you like the color story. But the color story for me is just a little bit too light. And I don't really have too many bad things to say about this palette other than it is $89 and not too much showed up on me. It gave me a pretty glow to the eyelid, which is why I do love the Tom Ford formula. But the color story here just wasn't working for me. There's so many other better Tom Ford quads that you can pick up. If you're very, very fair though, I mean, I know I have a lot of girls here who love an eyeshadow palette like this. So I, I don't think this is a palette that everybody's going to hate. There's definitely a market out there for a quad like this. But for me and for paying $89, I was really disappointed in this one. It just upsets me that Tom Ford is so hit or miss. You never know what you're going to get. And then of course you guys know this one, the Naked Pink. This is actually probably the number one worst palette that I've ever tried, especially at an $89 price point. You can see from the swatches that there is literally almost nothing on my hand. These have no pickup at all. The only decent shade in here is the glitter shade and the rest are just, ugh. Mm. And I, I have had a few people argue with me like it's supposed to be sheer. No, an intentional sheer formula that is good is going to be more so something like this Rose Prisme. I'm saying this is good quality. I just don't like the color story. This is bad quality. Like, very, very bad quality. It is an abomination that that is $89. Anyways, I'm being extra mean today. <gasps> what is, what side of the bed did I wake up on? <laughs> okay, the next eyeshadow palette I am wearing on my eyes right now, it's a pretty look. I mean, I like this, but I just, I struggle to understand <laughs> this palette. This is from Urban Decay. This is the Naked Cyber Palette. I definitely was taken by the packaging. I mean, this is so cool. And honestly, the color story, I really liked this when I saw it and when I bought it, I gave it the benefit of the doubt. Here's the thing, to you this palette you have to create very simple looks kind of like that Gucci palette today I think I'm wearing three shadows from the palette on my eyelid I'm just wearing a little bit of virtual in the outer corner and then I added some depth with bite and then I have not a bot all over my lid so if you do something along those lines you'll get a pretty look because these shimmers are really pretty but I have a lot of complaints about this palette one I hate the mattes that they chose I hate that they only have four mattes 
right? And one of them is this red. If you need any sort of definition, it has to be this red shade. And I don't always want to put red in the outer corner. Granted, I do know, of course, I can dig into other palettes, but I just hate that. <laughs> I don't wanna have to do that. And then the shimmers themselves, while they are absolutely beautiful, they are very crumbly and very, very messy. I had to apply the eyeshadow today with my finger and by wetting my brush, or I would recommend using glitter glue. If you put this on your lid, it's just gonna fall right off. And again, for a mid-range brand, it shouldn't be that way. It's not that hard to create a shimmer formulation like this. Uh, but I do think the shimmers are pretty, but I don't think they did a good job putting the corresponding mattes here. I don't understand why they use such warm matte shades when I think the majority of these colors would better benefit from more cooler mattes. So I just... Uh, there's a lot of improvements, in my opinion, that could be made about this palette. I really tried to like it. I did, and I tried to give it the benefit of the doubt, but I just can't anymore. It's not good quality. Okay, we are officially on to the last palette in this video. This is the Vizzy Art Paris Love Letter palette. You guys know how much I love Vizzy Art, but I do think the quality on this fell a little short. It's a nice, beautiful, soft color story. If you like those soft, peachy kind of tones, this is definitely a palette that I think you'd probably be leaning towards, but the quality in this palette, there's just some inconsistencies that Vizzy Art oddly enough never really has. So for example, this is the most powdery, loosely packed shade ever. It is a huge mess. I feel like every time I open up this palette, a new part of it is broken and there's a big mess. If you dip your brush in, this turns to dust. It's very, very odd. And then these two shimmers right here, which honestly are kind of the focal point of the palette, they're a little bit messy and more crumbly and they blend away very easily. And it was very important for in this palette, these two shades to be very good because that's immediately what your eye goes to when you see this palette. So overall, I just noticed a lot of inconsistencies with my palette and I was feeling a little disappointed with Fizzy Art in the beginning of the year just because I, I was bored and I didn't like the color stories that they were coming out with. I felt like it was the same thing all, over and over again, but you guys know they pulled it together to the end of the year. Like they had a huge comeback. Their most recent like seven palettes have been bomb, amazing. They've turned to a direction that I really wanted them to and creative formulations and like, colors that I really wanted them to. I don't really like this one. This one is very inconsistent in quality. So anyways, that is that. Those are the worst and most disappointing for me eyeshadow palettes in 2021. I got a little mean with it because you guys know I'm very passionate about my eyeshadow palettes. So stay tuned because tomorrow I will have a full face of the worst makeup so you can see how much I struggled with yesterday's makeup look. <laughs> Hence the reason why I'm wearing all makeup that I like today. And then after that, things on my channel are going to take a positive turn. We're gonna get into my yearly favorites. I'm so excited for that. But anyways, make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel and have that notification bell on because we are in the middle of Vlogmas, meaning I am posting every single day. Let me know down below what the worst palettes that you tried were this year. I would love to hear it and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye guys. Have a good one.